So maybe you go in the one pocket thinking it's a treat, but there's a hole cut in it. You slide right down to the big eagle and it's fucking a big trick. Welcome to the Tip In Maple Leafs Podcast. I'm Chad. I'm Dale. On this episode, we got lots of tricks. We got lots of treats. We recap the week of games that the Leafs just played. A rough start, but a better end. More money for Morgan Riley. It's now the core five. For how long? We don't know. Waivers. No more groin problems. Just the tip. And then Dale's got a Marley's update for us. And we're going to tee up a big week ahead for the Leafs. All this and more right here on the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast. Should we just go to the start of the week and do a recap of uh, the week that was? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Episode 111. Did you say that? Oh, sorry. Episode 111. I did not say that. 111. 111. Here it is. I got a little bit of a cold. So if you hear me sniffling or whatever. Oh, COVID. Uh, don't worry. There's no cocaine in the room. I'm just COVID though. No, it's not COVID. Okay. No COVID. So happy Halloween, motherfuckers. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Trick we or treat. Very special. Some special tricks and treats coming later in the episode. Stay tuned for that. I was at a Halloween party last night. I really, uh, I really enjoy the costumes they have nowadays really like those costumes that they have a lot of police officers and you know prisoners and flight attendants i mean just some great costume ideas that keep the party rolling you know what i'm saying well yeah did you take any pictures or because i would have liked to have seen i did i did not take any pictures i was i was playing i was playing music so i didn't I didn't take any pictures, but just while you're while you're sitting there and you're strumming the guitar and you're singing a few songs and your eyes are roaming around the room, you're just like, this is some really nice costumes. Yeah, some really nice costumes. going yeah. here. Yeah. I'll check Facebook and Instagram later this evening. I'm sure there'll be some sweet, sweet stuff on there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's fun. Anything else you'd like to say about the Halloween party last night? No, it was uh, it was it was just a, a nice night. It well, it rained, so it wasn't that nice. But uh, that was good. They had a pool. Yeah. They had a pool. They had people swimming in the pool. They cranked yeah. the heat up in the pool to like a hot tub and people were swimming and happy Halloween. So it was you were, good time. obviously you were playing outside. Like, were you playing full band or just guitar? Full, like just we were acoustic. playing full band. We were covered. So we didn't get wet. We had a heater. So we were warm. But when it started pouring at certain points of the night and what, what are you supposed to do? Right. Like everybody's yeah. taking shelter and running away and yeah, you know. Yeah, I know. And then the costumes get wet. So even better. <laughs> yeah, even better, even better, even better. All right, let's get All right, into let's it. Get let's in. get into the recap of the week. So Monday night, the Toronto Maple Leafs took on the Carolina Hurricanes. And an old pal was in the net. The redhead himself, the Danish man, Freddie <laughs> Anderson. Yeah, Fred. Yeah. The Leafs, the Leafs barely tested him. Mr. Tested him. Mr. Not Very Good in October is literally the Undefe- best goalie in the league undefe- in October. Undefeated. <laughs> undefeated in October. The, uh, Leafs, the Leafs pepper him with 25 shots. Yeah. Could, and most really of those of, most of those came in the third period, like the first two couldn't, periods. Yeah. Couldn't nothing. even think of, couldn't really even think out of those twenty five shots. Maybe one or two was a good scoring chance. They didn't have it again. No, no mustache the, opened the scoring with a nice wraparound. Yeah, nice wraparound. Sure. I mean, one of those hard wraparounds where you really got to reach to get it in. Yeah. And yeah, I thought, I thought, hey, maybe they might pull this one out, even though Carolina was out playing them yeah. and couldn't get anything going, but they just couldn't hold the lead. I, did, I didn't think that. Carolina's too good a fucking team. But anyway, coming off of the Pittsburgh loss, I was like, I didn't think they were going to beat Carolina because Carolina's a good fucking team. They play hard. Like, they're going to outwork the opponent most fucking nights. And so I didn't feel confident the least where their morale was going into this Carolina game. I just thought, no, this is going to be a fucking loss for sure. And... Yeah, they opened the scoring and then 
Carolina fucking scores three in a row and they get an empty netter. They beat the Leafs 4-1. I did not love just, again, I kind of thought lackluster effort by the Toronto Maple Leafs in this hockey game. Did not see a lot of things that I that I like. Keith and the players were trying to take positives out of this at the end. I get that. What are you going to do? It's a long season. You got to try to look for something, yeah. right? Yeah, but, uh, I felt like that too. I felt like... Did you not kind of feel like they, they didn't watch the same game that you watched? Oh, 100%. When Keith came out and said at the end of the game, well, I don't know how you guys saw it at home on TV, but I saw a lot of good things. I saw a lot of positive things. I was like, I know you have to say that because your team's really fragile right now, but yeah, yeah, he knows. He knew down deep. This was a team who wasn't, wasn't pressuring, wasn't going to the inside, wasn't getting dirty to get anything oh, done. Go to the inside. Yeah, okay. Good luck with that. Yeah. So anyway, they never, they never fucking do that. It was, but, uh, it was what it was. They lost. Yeah. The, yeah. So the sky was falling here in Toronto. Oh, for three on the power play again for the Leafs. They're out shot 36, 25. Carolina had 16 block shots. The least had, the Leafs had nine. Other than that, it, it was pretty comparable. Hits were comparable, but again, they, they keep putting this, puck possession stat up on the screen almost every game now like the Leafs are like have like puck possession a lot more than the other team but a lot of it is fucking outside so I just think the number is meaningless like yeah well teams have come to learn that that's how you play Toronto is you let let them have the puck that's totally fine you want to dance around the outside and take shots that have a low percentage of being scored you know shots from way outside point shots Go ahead and do that, and we'll just wait and capitalize on a two-on-one. Or Carolina played it perfect. Like, honestly, the way the Leafs always talk about how they want to play, if you go back to even when Babcock was here, and not just Keith, but the coaches always talk about how they want their team to look on the ice. Man, that is how Carolina looks. I, I don't know what Rod Brindamore has got going, but well. – He's got that team buying into like the perfect system. He's he he's really gone. When he was hired as coach, I was like, oh, Rod Brindamore, old player. We'll see. But he's a hell of a coach, man. Oh, he's hell great. of a coach. He's great, great coach. Like one of the best in the I don't league. think he gets enough respect. Like he's never talked about to coach, you know, at, at Olympics or world championships and stuff like that. But he is a really good coach. Did he win the Jack Adams last year? I don't I kind of think he did. I, I don't have it in front of me, but I kind of think Brendan Moore won the Jack Adams last season. Oh, I don't know. Sure I, I, I can't. I can't remember. If he did, he he deserves it. He's a very very good coach. Hundred percent. He deserves Brindamore. deserves Love more him. respect. Animal that guy. Oh, so, Le- Leafs lose four one. So and that was their fourth loss in a row. So just was not looking good going into the Chicago game on Wednesday. And I don't know, man. Like. <laughs> Chicago hasn't had a lead all season. They haven't won a game all season going into this game. And in the first intermission, it's two nothing Chicago. <laughs> so like, I know, the, I know. It's like, what the fuck is with these motherfucking guys, man? It's what like, with these it's like the guys? Leafs, the Leafs are the remedy to your problem. You haven't had a lead all year. Well, you're going to play Toronto. You'll get your lead tonight. You get to play with it. We should just quickly touch on the fact that everything's swirling around Chicago right yeah, now at this time, huge scandal and all that. So you'd think like right for the picking, right? Like, yeah, like, right for the picking and having we, won a game. Like, no. And haven't and had a lead. Like, like the list goes on and on. For, they're star players, Taves and Kate Kane didn't even play, but Taves is under the microscope with the whole Kyle beach situation sure. going on in Chicago. And here at the tip in, um, we won under, 100% support Kyle Beach and being courageous for coming out and doing what he did. But this was a game that Toronto should have should have won easily. Like, it yeah, was, I mean, they should have come out and been like, all right, this is our game to just get everything going, get the two points and go out. But of course, they got to make it hard on themselves. So they're down to nothing after one. Dude, dude, fucking. OK, they outshot the Hawks 40 to 29 in this game. Block shots, though, the Leafs, six, Chicago, 23. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, 
take what you want from those stats, but whatever. And again, the Leafs, 0 for 3 on the fucking power play. 0 for 3 on the fucking power play. It did look a little better. Oh, but dude. then you have to take it with a grain of salt because you're playing Chicago, who hasn't won a game all year. So Exactly, exactly. So we should, we should state how great Jack Campbell was. Yeah, Campbell. without Campbell, this game could have been, yeah, ugly. They could have lost that game. They, so the Leafs end up winning in, in overtime, 3-2. Camp scored in, who got, who got the goals? Or was it 2-1 or 3? Was No, it was 3-2. 3-2 in right? overtime. Who got the goals? Camp. Well, we should say all the goals, all the goals were backhanders. Yeah. Every single goal came off the backhand. Yeah. So JT scored on a backhand. JT. Camp tied it 2 2. Um, Nylander with the winner. And and Camp's goal, where he just kind of ripped it at the net with a backhand. Did you not kind of feel like that's the type of thing that has not been going the Leafs' way this year? Like just those goals that really shouldn't go in. They finally got one and they got yep. it at the right time and they tied it to two and then they go into overtime and Willie again, Styles. Willie Styles, but without Jack Campbell. Yeah, no, Campbell, some huge saves in overtime. Huge yeah. saves in overtime, man. Like that yeah, game no. could have been over. Campbell made some huge save. Willie Styles backhand through the five hole. Good night. Right. So for the least fine. So they snapped their four game losing streak. They beat Chicago three, two in overtime. The power play. <laughs> Coming out of this game, their power play in the last five games. So the Chicago win and the four p- previous losses, 0 for 14, man. 0 for 14. What can you say? What can you I say? With, with that with, kind of skill level? With on four forwards play? making $40 million and you are a goose egg for your last 14 power plays in your, in your last It's five crazy. Games. It's, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts that this power play can't get going. And to be perfectly honest, and you'll probably agree with me on this, the second power play looks better than the first power play. Maybe not as it doesn't look as fancy. It doesn't look as fancy, but it's just shoot, grind for a rebound. Shoot, grind for a rebound. Hundred percent agree. And we'll get to who scored a power play goal last night in the Detroit game. But anyway, Leafs went three two against Blackhawks. Yeah, so they break the the losing streak 3-2, and they head home for a five-game homestand starting Saturday night, last night, against the Detroit Red Wings. And what do we got here? What do we got here? What do we got? What's that? It looks to me like we've got no more groin problems because Mr. Mrazek is back in net. The groin is Look at that. The groin is good to go. The groin is good to go. So that was a positive for me because there's nothing worse than a groin oh fucking injury keeping you down. So no. I was surprised. I was surprised that it, it was a little early for me. I thought he would be out longer. Yeah. But uh, with that being said. And you know uh, groins. Of course, man. So, I mean, if, I, you, I if was, you think he's early, then he's definitely early. A hundred percent. So, you know, I was surprised to see him back. Now, I'm glad the groin's looking good, but. Morazic, eh. Well, yeah, but last, can you really bl- can you really blame him? No, I guess like, not. He played two periods. He got a groin injury. It's going to take him a little bit to get into it, but still, it was better than having Hutch in the net. Oh, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And we got anything, and, and he got out of the game without pulling his groin. Yeah, that's good. So he lives to fight another day. That's good yeah. to see. And uh, we got a healthy scratch, first healthy scratch of the season. Justin yeah. Hall. Good. Justin Hall takes the seat. We didn't uh, even really mention good. Austin Matthews going at going at Justin Hall in, in the, the Chicago, Chicago game. game. Yeah. yeah, because just come some bad, yeah, like around the blue line. I think he went off side. Lazy, just shit. lazy just, fucking yeah. plays, man. Matthews know, is open on the wing and he turns back. And I don't know. Yeah. Hall has been terrible this year. And and you know, I'm not a huge Justin Hall guy. You can go back and listen to this podcast. Yep. I've always stated I don't believe he's a top four defenseman on a Stanley Cup contender you're you're probably right you're probably right and he kind of looks at now i've heard that he's been sick or he had like an illness or whatever that kind of really took a toll on him so maybe i give him the benefit of the doubt but he's looked he's looked brutal this year and i think it's dragged muzzin's game down because he has to he makes hall look good on a regular basis okay i would say to that as well is that i don't think muzzin's played that great either and if muzzin's not playing good then hall's that's going to show in hall's game as well it really exploits hall when he doesn't have a 100 percent muzzin beside him 
Yeah, you got to have a hundred percent muzz, or you're fucked. Oh man, you got to have a strong muzz. <laughs> got to have a strong muzz. So I don't know. Do you think Hull? Like, what do you think here? Like, is this going to continue? Is this a one and done? He'll be back well, in. Like, okay, but so we'll get into the Detroit game and what happened. But what happened was Dermot went and played in the top four in Hall's absence, yeah. and guess who was pretty much benched after making a couple dumb plays in the game? Travis Dermot. Got benched for a few shifts. Well, here's the thing. I so, get. I get, I don't know, man. Okay, like here's the thing. Travis Dermott. I'm sorry. Like he's not a number fucking two defenseman. Like why don't you just put Sandine up there? Really? No, I know, but don't you think Dermott has played more games? He's kind of earned the right, at no, least the shot. At you're, least the shot putting, against Detroit on a no, Saturday night. You're, to you're see. putting him, you're putting him in a no because he's never going to be a number two defenseman. At best, he's a four, and you are putting in putting him in a position to fail. Putting him there right off the fucking hop. He's not, he can't fucking play. 20 minutes a night with more or 25 minutes a night with Morgan Riley. Like, no, he it's can't. Just, it's just fucking dumb, man. Like I get, like I get Brody and Muzzin given that a look, I don't have a problem with that as a shutdown pair, but if you're going to put anybody, up, put anybody up there, put Sandine because realistically Sandine's not a fucking five or six. He's probably a one or two. So yeah. he's a guy that could be in that fucking spot. I don't yeah. know. That's my fucking I, opinion I, on that. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. Sandine is the better of the two defensemen, but I just think Travis Dermott's been in the league longer. He's played more games. They were giving him a shot. Yeah. Fair they were enough. just like, Hey, this is your shot. It's a Saturday night. It's against Detroit. Let's see what you got. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, Justin Hall's getting back in this lineup. The team yeah. went out of their way to protect this guy. I know they protected him. So of course he's not long-term. Yeah. He'll probably be back. They, in yeah, Tuesday. They protected him in the expansion draft. They're not going to keep this guy a healthy scratch. Although no. maybe Keith is just like, I don't give a shit if you protected him. No, I think I think their best options here for personally, just go run it back with the same guys on defense, the same lines, and just get them to fucking figure it out. Get Hall and Muzzin, put them back, get them going. Brody back with Riley, get them going, and then whatever you want to do on the bottom pair. If it's benching Dermot or a sitting Dermot, I wouldn't mind giving a look to Lilligren and Sandine as a pair and just, and sitting Dermot out for a fucking while. I have, I have no – let the two kids get some chemistry and give them, like, you know, let them grow together for a couple seasons, and maybe yeah. they can – But I don't know. It, I'm not a big – I'm kind of – But this, is, this isn't the time to – this isn't the time to do that. It's just not the time to do that, man. This well, is a, okay. What take Dermot out and give no, no, Sandine and Lilligan I, I'm a look saying, for a stretch of games? I'm just saying this defense is kind of last Shit. year. The, no, yeah, the, <laughs> last year the defense was so good and it was so solid. It's, Maybe it's the same di- defense other than I know, one guy, and they look completely different. They're not playing very good this know, year, and I don't know if brutal. it's it's the North Division versus being back in the Atlantic. I don't know what it is, but what I do know is this is not a winning defense core. No. So you doubled down on it again. You protected Hall. You were like, this yeah. is going to be the thing. If you only have a few years left with, with this core that you've tied into, if this is the defense you're going with, like if you're going to be like, well, we'll give Sandy and little girl a chance. Well, okay, that's great. But you're basically telling your fans, hey, we're not a Stanley Cup contender. Like, you know, we're going to try to make the playoffs and see what we got with these rookie defensemen. They okay, but they shit like, the I, bed. They shit the bed. I understand that, but I don't see there being much of a difference if it's Lilligren or Dermot. I really don't. Like, yeah, Dermot's got more games. That's but... the problem, man. No, I know. So that's I'm the problem. If it, they're if both not. Be... They're both not ready for prime no. time. Okay, so but if it's gonna be if it's gonna be Dermot, I I would just rather see. Okay, I've seen Dermot. I haven't seen Lilligren and Sandine, a fresh pair. Let's give them a fucking run yeah. and just see how they look. Let's go. I don't think Dermot is going to make the difference, and neither do I think Will Lilligren. But I just give it a different fucking look. Yeah, anyway, something, anyway. something. Well, anyway, we'll see so they, what happens. But so Detroit rolls into town on Saturday night, and uh, kind of a weird game, kind of a wild game. You want to give yeah. us the rundown on it? Yeah. Well, I mean, the Leafs out shoot them thirty. It was back and forth all night, right up, right until the fucking final buzzer, almost back and forth. If there was another two minutes left, Detroit would have tied it. Hundred percent, hundred fucking percent. So like Leafs outshoot them 38, 31. Block shots were basically even 15, 14 for Detroit. Hits basically even 23, 21 for the Leafs. Um, 
Leafs dominated in the faceoffs. Power play, they both scored one power, both teams scored one power play goal on two attempts. So the Leafs finally fucking uh, get off the schneid on the fucking power play and get her going. But yeah, and which unit did it? It was the second unit. The so second unit. Your Muzzin scored the first goal, and then we had a little tip on the power play. Little tip. A little tip. Oh, Should, we it? Should we do Let's it? Should we do it? Let's, Let's do, do it. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Just the Tip. Perhaps play a little game called Just the Tip. Just for a second, just to see how it feels. All right, so you break you break this down. Last night I, I wasn't watching the game too close because I Oh, was, dude, uh, this was this was Halloween, well, Halloween Eve. Yeah. Prom night special right here. Just the tip. So how did <laughs> go how did it go down? Well, it was quite simple. Jason Spezza, and we'll get to him shortly because I got a lot of good things to say. I fucking love. I can't get enough of Jason Spezza. Cannot get enough. And he sets this tip up. He, of course, he does. Spezza, because Spezza second, knew. Spezza knew. He's like, we're not winning a lot of fucking hockey games. <laughs> but the one thing, the one, it. yeah, the one thing we're not doing. We're not getting enough tips. Not getting enough tips. So yeah. he saw, what did he see? He saw the brunt. He saw the brunt right in front. So Spezza shot kind of block. And not the not the first time he's seen this. <laughs> no, he had seen the, he had seen the brunt, a, a brunt or two before. But he, he so he has a shot block. He kind of gets the puck back. And it's, it was kind of a shot pass right in the brunt, right in the net, tipped in by... Michael Bunting, friend of the show. Hard right tip? Run. It was smooth, man. It, this was a prom night, prom night special. Prom night special. <laughs> Just the tip right in the brunt. Hey. Set up by are, our man, Jason Spencer. It's still early, less than 10 games in, but the brunt's leading the way for tips. Not a surprise. No. Not a surprise. I think everyone will talk about that they might be surprised, but here at the tip in, I'm pretty sure we called it in the summer that this guy may lead the team in tips this year. 100%. So there you go, boys and girls. <laughs> Little Halloween Eve special. Just the tip right in the yep. front. All right. So the second power play scores a goal. So, yeah. So, and then Kerfoot ends up getting a, a pass from Tavares and he buries it. And then <laughs> Tavares ends up getting a pass from Kerfoot and he buries it. So that line's looking good. Tavares and I think Kerfoot has an assist and a, and a goal in this game. Tavares ends up getting a goal and two assists. And then, you know, right at the end there, it was five, it was four, three at this time, I think. And Marner gets on the board late in the third period with his first of the season, thinking it's an insurance goal ends up being the winner because Detroit comes back and scores like a minute yeah, after Marner scores to make it five, four. They scored in the last minute, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah. So but hey, Marner gets his like first goal in 17 games or something ridiculous like that. And, like and the crowd gave him a regular standing ovation. Games. Oh yeah, like hey, I guess Mitch is still our guy. Now look, look, last podcast we did, I was just, I was, I, I was done. I you were was done with done. Mitch. You were done. I was. We actually got done. a lot of comments about that. Well, hey man, like but enough's you're, enough. You were a little, you were a little angry, a little mean, Not, a little mean on Mitch. Look, look. Enough is enough here, but uh, I just think like okay, like they're not going to trade him. So great, but wasn't that exactly? A- ask me, wasn't, ask that, me, wasn't that exactly the type of goal you thought he needed to get? Okay, and we'll if, like, sure, just and we'll something to go his way. But here's what I'm here's what I said last podcast. I do not believe this team can win with Mitch Marner. Does last night change my mind on that? Hell, fucking no! Are you kidding me? Like, does it change your fucking mind on that? No. Come and, on. And, and we might as well transition to the next. Great, topic. Mitch got so, a fuck. Mitch got his first goal in seventeen so grade, the Leafs, uh, games. The Hallelujah. Leafs, the Leafs win five four. Um, see you in April, and we'll see what's fucking up then. Leafs win five four. They they get the points. They move on. They've won two in a row. It may have been ugly, but hey, we got the points. You move on. But well, speaking I'm, of Mitch Marner. That brings us to Morgan Riley signed a big contract. Well, before we go there, I wanted to say too, just while we're still kind of on the, before we leave the game recaps, Marner ends up at the beginning of the week, or maybe it was the Chicago game. I think Marner and JT end up uh, getting put back together. So Mitch, like Austin loses his little buddy. 
Uh, yeah, well, you had to, you had to, do, you had to do something. No, I know. Did we talk about that last podcast? I think we Did touched that... on it. Yeah, that you okay, had, to, I... you just, you had to do something. The team's playing like shit. You got to break. So them anyway, off. Marner and JT are back together. J and Kurt, and they've got Kerfoot playing with them. T- JT, the best week he's had so far. He's looked a lot. He looked a lot better yeah. this week. And now but it was actually playing with Kerfoot. The two, the two point five million dollar man, Nick Ritchie, is now a staple on the fourth line. Well, so, what can you do, man? What can you do? You got to take those chances, I guess, and it didn't work out. No. Nope. But and speaking got, of Mitch Marner. I think, got, I think he's got one assist. <laughs> yeah, he's going to bring you nothing. He is going, he's going to bring you nothing. Dude, it may just be it may, – Nick Ritchie just may be a bust. How do you get out from that? They, they, it's, I wish it was a one-year deal. Could they yeah. – like, how do you get out from that? Well, you could probably trade him. <sighs> You'd have to give in a pick the, with it or something. Yeah, you'd have to get rid of it, but maybe he turns it around. It's still early, so we can't go too crazy, but it's not looking good. It's not looking good. No. But anyway, Morgan Riley signed a big contract, and I want to talk about this because um, he kind of took a little bit of a discount to stay in Toronto. He because he got he well he got sixty million over eight years, so he's getting paid. But really. On the open market, he may have been able to get more. It kind of, do you not think it kind of makes him look good? Like he just signed the deal. He took a little bit less. He took what he took the full eight years. He got what he could get. I mean, after some of the contract negotiations, especially Mitch Marner's, it just kind of makes Morgan Riley to the fans, even though he got paid, look like, wow, what a good guy. I what suppose I don't see this as a hometown discount personally. I just don't a, see it a tiny bit. Like I think he's okay. making he took, he's making what he's what he's worth instead of getting overpaid. So it's not really, yeah, you're right. It's not a discount, but it's not I want you know, I want Darnell Nurse money and I okay, want it well, now. Hang on, hang on a second. Darnell Nurse didn't get an eight-year deal, I don't believe. Seven is the max for I think, or did he? Maybe he did. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. But, Seven, it, it, but the bottom line is the cap hit is the biggest thing. No, the I cap understand hit that, is not. If if more if Morgan would have waited and went to free agency, the longest deal he could have got was seven years. So he took the extra deal or the extra year, the eight years, to drop the cap hit down to seven point five. If he goes to the free agency, maybe he gets an eight point five offer for seven years. Well, that's the same fucking deal. Yeah, no, oh, I get it. I get it. But what I'm saying is the optics of it. Like, I don't the think he's optics, ever getting... the optics of it look like like he's still getting paid and he's getting paid what he's worth and he got his eight years. But the optics of it to me just make it look better than the yeah. Marners. It makes Riley yeah. look like a nicer guy to the fans. Yeah. OK. The whole situation, that. whether it's true or not, I just think that's how it is. But now that he's got that contract. What the hell are you going to do in the offseason? There's no uh, money. There's no money. They've got five guys. You say that that they got five, but it's back down to four. <laughs> well, they've got five guys making fifty million dollars. The cap's eighty. What are you going to do? You got to get rid of somebody, man. You cannot have five guys eating up fifty million dollars. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't really, I, I really don't. Start with Kerfoot. Start with Richie like guys like that but if you want yeah. to sign Campbell I mean basically they, they're giving Phil Kessel's money that's on the salary cap right now is going to Morgan Riley which is 1.2 1.2 and then they'll find a little bit extra but you're so tied up against it and and Jack Campbell's going to want a contract yeah like if Jack Campbell keeps going the way he's going and have an incredible season, you think he's not going to want a little pay raise to stay as the number of one? Of course, of course. I mean, what do you you have no if money? Not, he's going to want what like he's going to want probably what Morazic is making three some three point five three point eight. Yeah. So like that's where Jack's probably I don't know. Is going. Like I I don't know either. Like I mean, look, last, eventually the it it's just got to burst. The last it's just got to burst, man. It should burst soon. I would. I think, mean, but. Maybe not soon enough. Like this could, you know, <laughs> like we... no. I mean, eventually, you've just one of the big boys has got to. It's just got to go to relieve the pressure. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I you don't can't disagree with that. You can't hold it in that long. You can't keep it that tight for that long and not just release it. It's too tight, man. I, it's I hear way it. too tight. But way last look, tight. look, going back, you need to, to last... shoot off one of those big ones, and then it just everything will come down and feel better. 
I think that's a good idea. I think that's exactly what they need to do. The last, last podcast, when the sky was falling, I was ready to like, hey, Mitch Marner, Morgan. I'm like, why the fuck would you re-sign Morgan Riley? What's he bringing? Look, okay, yeah, he had a pretty decent game. I believe someone said. Someone called you a very angry person. <laughs> I've just had enough. I don't want to see it anymore with these yeah. guys. Like, that's just what it is. It's not – it's fr- it's a frustration. I'm not an angry person at all. It's No, you frust- want to see a winner. No, yeah, I'm it's winning. the frustration of I've come to the conclusion and my mind is still – I've come to the conclusion. I'm not going to go back. I don't think they can win with these guys. That's my opinion, okay? Because they've shown me time and time again that they can't win with these fucking guys. Why is anything going to change with the same fucking core guys? Like, what? Am I missing something here? Am I the fucking crazy one? Like, no, they can't not, win with not, these guys. You're that's not crazy my at all. that's my conclusion. So I'm like, no, okay. you can you can win with these guys. I don't believe they can. I think you can win with these guys, but these guys need better supporting cast around them, and you yeah. can't afford any better supporting cast. Like, you need. Imagine this team. With this core, but you still had Hyman, and you still had Connor Brown, and you still had Kapanen, and yeah. then you know, and then well, you they, add, they're not going to be able to do that. Jack. And then you added like a Bunting or and different pieces like that. No, I get it. I get it. You're that's what I'm saying. Unless one of these big contracts goes, and it's not Riley, like they're not going to sign Riley and then trade no, him in the they've just com- They just committed to him, but like it's I don't, just I, so tight again look, this like, season. You're going to be know, fiddling around the edges trying to look, fill in minimum contracts. I thought Riley had a pretty good game last night. Honestly, I, I thought he looked pretty good. He made some some good plays in his own end and do, doing some. He did some good things last night. He looked better. So I'm hoping that he can continue to build and whatever because I have not liked his game very much in the first couple of weeks of this season. I think he's been getting beat to, like in foot races out, like on the outside by players coming down on him. And like, he just hasn't looked good to me. So I was in the impression, or I, I guess I was under the impression that I would be like, okay with them moving on from Morgan Riley, free up the money, do something else, give it a different look. Well, no, no, fuck. Why do that? Just why not reward another guy that hasn't won fucking dick all since he's been here. Well, let's do yeah. that. Let's just do that instead. That makes much more fucking sense. And you're hey, right. You're I like, right. But I, I like you Morgan. have to. Don't you get have, me, don't, but you have I like to. Re- Morgan you have to replace. Don't get me wrong. You have to replace him. I, I understand that. Like, and listen, don't get me wrong. And here. unless you do I it like from Morgan. a, if you look at the free agents next season, there ain't no Morgan Riley on that list. Okay, fair. So, I, so you'd I, have look, to do it through trade or something. Like I don't. I'm not saying run the guy out of town. I like Morgan Riley as a person. I don't love him as a player. That's just my personal opinion. I yeah. don't think he plays hard enough in his own end. He's got offensive ability, but it's hit or miss. Like some nights it's there, some nights it's not. I guess it depends on what type of effort he feels like fucking giving that given night. Cause he doesn't give the same effort every fucking night either. So yeah, I think he just, gives the effort. He just, he's not, he doesn't always have great nights. So like, look, I'm not shitting on this signing, but I'm kind of like, does this make a lot of sense right now? I, I guess why not play it out again and see like let's see if they fucking blow it in the playoffs again or if they miss completely it kind of as great as this core is like as great as these players are I won't say the core but individually as talented as Austin Matthews is as Mitch Marner is as Morgan Riley doesn't it kind of remind you of the Phil Kessel and Dion Phaneuf years where they were doubling down on guys that couldn't win like they give Dion Phaneuf like a huge contract. They give Fizz, seven, Phil Kessel seven a times contract. very similar to this. They give Joffrey Lupul a huge contract, and they, know, they were doubling the down on guys who never did anything. But and guess yet, what? These guys are more talented, but they haven't done but anything. Th- guess what, Chad? That management team was delusional. They were under the impression that they could actually win with those guys, yeah. Lupul and Kessel, and put because up they game. took Boston to seven games and then had the worst game seven in my lifetime. They no, believed they the were game seven. They believe they were closer. Well, blowing a four-one lead. With it was bad, but it wasn't as bad as this last one. I don't think. Yeah. Agree to disagree, but anyway. No, it was bad. Like they were all bad. <laughs> they were all bad, but again, it's the same. It, I'm just saying it reminds me of that time. It reminds me of that time because at that time when Fanuf signed the contract, we were kind of like, couldn't you spend this money somewhere else to get this team better? And when Kessel signed and Lupul, you're like, Lupul's just gonna get hurt. Like yeah. he's, there's no way Lupo's going to finish five years or whatever he signed, four years. 
And it kind of feels the same. They signed Morgan Riley and you're like, great, Morgan Riley's a good player, but he hasn't won anything. No, and, and you're right. And so, you know, he's the longest tenured leaf right right now. And I mean, look, we'll we'll wait and see how this plays out. I don't love the deal. I don't hate it either. Like I, like I said, I like Morgan as a person. Some nights I like him as a player, but there's a lot of things he does that yeah. drive me fucking nuts in his own end too. So we'll you're right up the middle. It, we'll, we'll see how this works out. Eight years is a long time, man. It's his game. Like I said, this last podcast too. Do you think Riley's best years are ahead of him or behind him? And I personally believe his best years might be behind him. I hope yeah. I'm wrong on that because eight years well, is a long I mean, fucking time, man. Yeah, whether they're behind him or not, he ain't going to be Morgan Riley by the end of this contract. Like he'll be well, no, thirty, he'll be thirty-five no when the contract's over. Yeah, for sure. Oh. And, and so we'll we'll see. Like we will see. Like time will tell. Like yeah. if this ends up being a good deal or not a good deal. But if he stays healthy, he could be in territory where he is a lifer here. He's a lifer. Oh, he 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 may very well finish his career as a Leaf. He he may well he may very well when it's all said and done have the franchise record for games played as a Toronto Maple Leaf, which I believe is George Armstrong right now at around 1100 games, I think. So Morgan Riley could be putting himself into like some very, very special categories. If he ends up, you know, staying the whole time and, and playing, staying healthy and we'll see. So good for him and we'll see what happens. Uh, We'll see what happens. All right. Let's talk about this. All right. So we're going to, I want to talk about Jason Spencer, but before I do that, let's just do a few plugs here right now, you know, because we love to plug it. When you have a hole, you plug it. Let's plug some holes, baby. When you got got a little hole, you got to plug it. We are the Tip and Maple Leafs podcast. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the Tip and Maple Leafs podcast, on Twitter at the Tip and podcast, YouTube channel at the Tip and Maple Leafs podcast. Hit like, hit subscribe, and then there's a little bell. You just give that little bell a little tip. And then it notifies you every time we post a video and then you can watch it. And we break the podcast up into segments. So you can just watch two minute clips, five minute clips, or if you want, you can listen to the whole podcast on YouTube. Also, we have a Patreon page. It's patreon.com backslash the tip in podcast. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, any little bit can help. It'll help us make more frequent episodes, better recording, better sounding. Just look at just make the tip a little better because the better the tip is, the better everything is in life. Am I right? If you love the tip in, you like listening to the show, go to our Patreon page. Give us a little tip. Give us a little tip. Give a tip to the tip. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, let's move on with the show. So we're, we're working on some ideas we're going to talk about later. And we did, we did have a few people. We did have a few people donate to the Patreon page after the first episode. We just started up. We want to thank those people. We appreciate it so much. It'll help the podcast huge. We're, we're thinking we're going to get something in the works for people that join and donate uh, to our Patreon. We'll have some maybe exclusive content for the Patreon people. We'll have in the works. We haven't decided yet, but we think we'll get something going where or the people that join our Patreon page will get some type of exclusive content from the tip in Maple Leafs. That's right. Speaking of exclusive content, this has nothing to do with exclusive content, but good segue. So I went as Eddie Belfort for Halloween last night. Did I a dress as a goalie or B wear nothing but a leather jacket and a bar of soap around my neck? <laughs> Come on, man. You think I don't know the answer to that? What's one? the answer? Come on, it's leather jacket all that day. That is right. That is right. Come on. People were like, know my... what are you, a prisoner? And I was like, no, I'm Eddie Belfort. <laughs> Eddie Belfort, what are you, crazy? Kept my beers in my pocket, bar of soap around my neck, leather jacket, nothing else. Yeah, man. That guy takes a shower like nobody else. Oh, <laughs> he no. loves it. Nobody he loves it. He's there when the first guy gets in, and he's there when the last guy gets <laughs> out. <laughs> Yes, he is. Yeah, <laughs> that guy just loves a beer in a shower, right? Like, oh yeah, ah. with the leather coat. Love that. Okay, <laughs> I know. I know you wanted to talk about Spets. Yeah, just quickly, we should talk about some positive things. Well, Amadio gets claimed off waivers. He played one game and then he was out, yeah, and now he's yeah, gone to Vegas. Right. He gets claimed off waivers, so they're down to they don't have a, a forward 
They don't have any depth <laughs> forwards. Like the 12 guys in the lineup are the 12 guys. There's no one else that could come in and, and play. Like they'd have to call someone up or whatever. And yeah. we'll, well get if, to that. if someone gets hurt, they can. Okay. Well, anyway. Oh, so, yeah. For right now, they can't they can't change this. No, lineup. they can't change the lineup. But what was Amadio any... gonna do? No, Amadio, I mean, he's just a dude too. But now Amadio is gone and Brooks is gone, and they lose these guys on fucking waivers. It would be nice to like maybe make a deal, get a pick, get a fucking fourth rounder or yeah. sixth rounder. No, man, Jesus. in the salary cap era, it doesn't work like that. These waiver wires, like you know about this because he's a leaf. But if you look at the waiver wire every day, shit's getting picked up all over. It's yeah. just it's just the way it is. Not by the Leafs. <laughs> no, the <laughs> Leafs the Leafs aren't picking stuff up. But I think um, I think your boy, you called this, but I think your boy down on the Marlies, Josh Hosang. Yeah, I honestly believe he's that on they. I believe he's on his way up to the big club, and I believe letting Amadio go on waivers and things like that. I think their long, their long-term plan is that guy. It's got, it's gotta be. So we'll just do the Marlies now then because okay, we'll do the Marlies. Then we're going to talk about Jason Spezza, but these are two positive stories. Mar. Okay. Josh Hosang. I think he's got six goals in. I'm not sure how many games they played four or five or six games, whatever. He's got six goals and he hasn't even played every game. I think they, he, he missed two games too. So he's, yeah, I think he had two yesterday. I don't know if they played today. I didn't check, but He's been killing it. He's been killing it. So I don't know. I'm super high on Josh Hosang. There's no way this guy's an AHLer. And I think that like he's better than guys they have in that lineup right dude. now, including Nick Ritchie, including Engvall. He's- dude, I watched, I don't, you're the Marlies guy. Like you keep tabs on the Marlies. Dale watches the Marlies. He, He's not, the Mar- re- not religiously. No, but like, you're the Marley's guy in this podcast. There's only Chad, two some, of us. Sometimes I dip into the Marley's. Sometimes I dip out. Yeah. You like to I, go. I, I'll take a dip with the Marley's every yeah. now and then. Dale doesn't really, it doesn't really matter to him what league it is. If he's got to go down to the minors and take a dip, he'll do that. <laughs> That's no right. big deal. That's right. That's right. But I actually, I actually watched some of the Marley's and I could not, he, Josh Hosang, if you watch the Marley's, He's an NHLer playing in oh, the AHL. Dude, he's boy, he's a good yeah. half step to a full step ahead of most of the people on the ice. So there's just no way they're just letting this guy sit there. No. When you no. with I don't know. And Nick Ritchie's on like Amadio's lost on waivers, and Nick Ritchie's sinking on the fourth line. And you got this guy who obviously looks ready. I don't know. I don't know. No, That's just 100%. my take, but you're the Marley's guy. No, I, dude, you know how high I, I am on Hosang. I have been from the get go. I probably would have, I, I can see why he went to the Marley's to start the year, but I was ready to have him in my opening night lineup. That's how high I am on Hosang. So, yeah, I wasn't. But then when I watched, I was like, Jesus. Just a matter of time for me. Like, is it, does it take until Christmas? Maybe. I don't know. But like, I think it's just a matter of time. There's some cap complications there because he doesn't have an NHL contract right now. And, with Engvall or sorry with um Mikheyev, like coming back and he'll still be out another month but like there's yeah that's compl- right that's right there's complications here like on, on what's gonna what's gonna happen like so we'll see but I I find a spot for Jose I just okay if well he he's gotta get a chance at some point this season at some point he's flying down there He's, yeah. he's earned the right to come up and at least have a shot. If you're going to let some of the guys that we've seen play, the way this team's played this year, there's a lot of guys who deserve to sit out for at least a game. Agreed. To have okay, Josh well, Hosang have a let, shot. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If McKayef was ready to come back this week, let's say next game, if he was good to go, who comes, who comes out? Fuck. My honest opinion, Nick Ritchie. Think they would do that? No, or I don't. Angle, I don't think, think they would. They would. I think probably. I think Keith would, but I think Keith is told by management you cannot. That doesn't make any sense to me. Well, how bad does it look? You gave the guy five million over two years. Well, you win some, you lose some. They shouldn't have given him the fucking like. I would find a way to bury that right fucking now. Like I would find some way to fucking bury it. I don't know how you do it, but yeah, it's been bad. It's been bad. Like right personally, right now, like Engvall and. I don't know. Fuck. I'd rather have Hosang in. I'd rather have McKayf in. I think they both bring you more than Richie and Engvall. And I don't know. I don't know. We'll I, I know. I know what you're saying. We'll see what happens. Hopefully Josh Hosang gets his, uh, gets a start. Anything else on the Marlies? 
No, I, I just quickly though, like I don't want to see them keep guys that can are better and should be in the lineup out of the lineup just because they decided to pay Nick Ritchie two point five million dollars. Guess that, what? It doesn't look like that was a good move. So fix but they, it. Fucking but they, fix it. That is another problem when you are tight against the cap. You don't have that luxury. You don't have that unless Nick Ritchie breaks his leg and you can put him on LTIR, you don't have the luxury well, of just this... plugging him out and put it. Because if you pull him out as a healthy scratch to put Josh Hosang in, you've got to add Josh Hosang's contract to the salary cap along with Nick Ritchie, and you don't have the room. It's just this... another problem that they have. This this might warrant a visit to Robada Island. <laughs> that has a... <laughs> there... That was Lou Lamorello. There's no Robodon, know, but he was the greatest at that. I think it's still out there. Dude, Robodon still works for this team. Did you know that? Yeah, he I does, know that. He does something in the organization. So he, do you he, remember, went, he went to Robodon Island, and he's never resurfaced. I've never seen him ever again. Do you remember Joffrey Lupel just disappeared? Yeah. He just went away. Yeah. yeah. And, and like he, he said he was good to go. He was looking good. Kadri was like, oh, he looks better than ever. He looks so like ready to go. Yeah, and, and then Lupo puts like, out no. like <laughs> then like two weeks later, Lupo puts out a letter. Yeah. Like he released the letter being like, I am not good to go. I still have an injury. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> Lou was like, dude, if you still want your fucking money, here's what's gonna happen. Yeah. But well, anyway, <laughs> this this Richie situation could warrant. A trip to Robota Island. That's what I think. Yeah, I don't think Dubas has it in his balls to. Well, he's going to have to if he wants to be serious. He, he could start shit. his own island, a Richie Island. <laughs> so it's no longer Robota Island. It's Richie Island. And maybe he comes up with a new way to get rid of guys. Right, right. But we'll see. Give Richie a little longer. May, not too maybe, much longer. A little bit may, more rope. Maybe they hire. I don't know where Mike Ricci's working out right now. But maybe they hire Mike Ricci. Just as a special consultant to Reach Dog Island, and Reach they have Dog this Island. whole this whole new thing. They <laughs> Duba says, "Sorry, bud, it's not working out. Here's a pair of Reach Dogs. Hit get the, here's the boat. Reachy's coming on the boat to pick you up. Yep. They're going to Reach Dog Island. Here's your here's your new flip flops." <laughs> and then you get on the beach, and you're like, "All right, I'm just taking a few days to relax." And then all of a sudden, you get a fucking cross check from behind, and <laughs> that's it. The guy, with, no, the guy, guy with flip flops just comes running out. Ah, oh, the Reach Dog Island wouldn't be that bad. They'd have like softball. If anyone purpose. knows where Mike Ricci is, we have been trying to get in contact with him yes. to get him on the podcast. Yes. He lives somewhere in the Peterborough area. If anyone can get us in we contact can, with if, Mike Ricci, if you know Mike Ricci, email the tip in tip in podcast at gmail.com. Let us know any contact information. We would love to have him. We've been Mike Ricci fans since we were nine years old. Yes. We want this guy to come on the podcast. But anyway, let's get to the main, not the main event, but the best player on the Leafs team okay. this year, the best contract in the NHL, the yeah. best brunt find and tip in person I have ever seen in my life. This guy loves a brunt, loves it. Jason Spezza, man. Yeah, wow, man, Jason Spezza. 38-year-old Jason Spezza leading the team. He's the leader of the team right now. I just can't more than JT, more than Austin, more than Mitch. It's Jason Spezza's team. I I I think so. Like he just looks it's it's hard to explain, man, but he just looks so I just love everything about the guy. I love his effort. I just there's nothing about him I I don't like. Literally, there's nothing about this guy I don't like. Yeah, his attitude, the way he approaches the game, the way he plays the game. It yeah. does everything right. He literally does everything. Which is crazy because right. if you could go back to 2004 or back in the old Toronto versus Ottawa rivalry days, if you could go back and talk to Chad and Dale back then, they would fucking hate Jason Spezza. We would hate Jason Spezza. I haven't mentioned this a long, in a long time on the tip in Maple Leafs podcast, but there's not a team in the history of the National Hockey League that I despise more than the Ottawa Senators. I fucking hate them. I have always hated them, and I always will. I fucking hate the Ottawa Senators, okay? Yeah. So, like, Alfredson, whatever. Yeah, Spezza was never a, a big fan of Spezza. I didn't like any of those guys that played for the Senators. Yeah, it wasn't but, him. It was just anyone that put the O on their jersey. You just That's right. Like, I like Connor Brown as a, as a player. You've always, I, you've always shied away from the big O. Yeah, that's 100%, <laughs> man. But, yeah, that, that's true. But, like, look. 
like I like Connor Brown. I like a couple of guys that play on the team now, but I just still the organization. I can't stand them. But yeah, back in the, like, oh, the it's just funny. I, I remember watching those old playoff games with you. We would go to your apartment back in the day and like that they would play Ottawa in the first. It was always in the first round yeah. and it was such a heated series. But Spezza oh. played in those series. Yeah. And we were just like, yeah, we hated Spezza. We hated him. And and now yeah. he's honestly one of my favorite NHL players, like yeah. not just favorite Leafs in the entire league. This yeah. guy's yeah. up there. It, it really is insane to think of like the money that Spets is making. Like he, he and he has made his money. Like he made a lot of money in his career, but just for the he's playing because he loves playing hockey. He just wants to play for the Leafs. Yeah. He doesn't want to play anywhere else. But, he wants to try to win a championship. Crazy here. for him to ask for a million dollars. No, of course not. And or he's one, be one point, worth it. like would he? Would it be crazy for him to ask for what Wayne Simmons is making, or what Wayne Simmons made last year at one point five? Well, is is Simmons at league minimum now? No, he's at nine hundred thousand. He makes more okay. than Spezza. He should be making league minimum, but anyway, Spe- and I Spezza think, should be making a million bucks. I know, but I think Spezza realistically is like he gets it. He's like he understands where their cap issues are, and they've got a lot of money tied up at, like elsewhere. So I think he's just like, I don't need the money, so I'll take. The least amount possible to I'll allow you to have a little bit more money to do other things with. I think that's where his head's yeah. at, which is smart. I wish some of the other fucking guys well, and, like that too. And it's about hockey too. Like he just he just wants to win. He just wants to play hockey. He he's not. You don't see Jason Spezza doing like GQ magazine or anything. You know, he's not out there doing all these crazy things. And why would he? He's a fourth line player in the NHL, thirty eight years old. I get it. But at the same time. I don't know. It's it's very refreshing to see this guy. It's oh, very refreshing to hear him talk. It's very refreshing to see him play, especially the way this season has started. It's yep. it's just nice. So Jason Spezza, he, anytime great. you want to come on the tip. In, oh man, like just can't say enough about Jason Spezza. Love this guy and hopefully continued success because he's killing it. And I just man, he's almost uh, like he loves to slap it too. Like, yeah. no, like I, I don't want to say he's driving it. the bus, but like it's close. oh he's driving the bus. It's man. close, man. So anyway, love Jason. He's driving Spencer. the bus. Love if Jason you look, Spencer. who's the guy right now that Keith is using in key situations to spark the team when they're losing or when they're playing shitty? All of a sudden, you'll see Spetsa playing on the second line. You'll see Spetsa on the first power play. You'll see Spetsa. He. Jason Spezza is his catalyst right now to spark the team. And when that is, when you're that guy, you're, you're the team right now. Okay. So just to, just to let you guys know, Jason Spezza, uh, the nine games played, the least have played nine games so far. He's got three goals, two assists, five points, puts him tied for third on the team. Okay. Tavares had a three point night last night. He's got seven points on the season. Nylander's got six. Bunting, Riley, Spezza, all tied for five points, tied for third with five points. So enough said, Jason Spezza. Yeah. Like, seriously. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, right. okay, what else you got? You got anything else? Well, if you want to talk more about Eddie Belfort, I'm cool, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay. No, I think we should get into – yeah, you beat Chicago. Yeah, you beat Detroit. But guess who's coming into Toronto this week? Okay, I want to get into next week's games, but we'll keep that till the very end. Let's play a Halloween seggy here. Oh, Let's we got a Halloween quick, seggy? Let's just do a quick little Halloween seggy. All right. This, this technically is the first segment of the new season for wet puck or dry stick. But because it's Halloween, we're going to rename it just for one night only. Trick or treat, motherfuckers. Right. Well, Trick I don't I don't have a treat. I don't have a theme song for it, so we'll have to That's just okay. go right into it. Put in the Mike Myers Halloween theme music, the, the scary music <laughs> where he's sneaking up. I, I don't have the copyright for that because we're um, poor. So we'll just call it, this is trick or treat. So how do we do this trick or treat? It's just wet pucker dry stick, but instead yeah. it's a trick or a treat. We'll throw out some questions or some scenarios. And yeah, instead of wet puck, wet puck meaning good. We love a wet puck. Dry stick is bad. Nothing worse than dry stick. All right. Well, it's Halloween. So a trick is real good. Or sorry, a trick is bad. A trick is not good. A treat. We want a sweet treat. Sweet treat is fantastic. A treat. We like it. A trick. No, thank you. All right. You go first. Okay, I'll throw one out here. Got a couple scenarios to end the show on here, okay? 
Can the Leafs move forward with five guys making $50 million Trick. when the flat cap is 80? Trick. <laughs> is that a recipe for success going forward? Trick or treat? Trick. 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 All day Huge long. trick. Big care dick. To, Big care dick to, trick. Care, care to explain how they try to, I don't know, fix that? Or just how do you... How do you have success with that type of you situation? Don't. You don't. Yeah, you probably don't. Like, you, yeah, don't. you don't. Simple as that. Trick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trick. That's easy. Easy fucking question. Dube is pulling tricks all over Next. the fucking place. Next. Okay. All right. Ready? After yeah. me- give me okay, a no way. give me a sweet treat. Okay. Well, this could be a trick. <laughs> this could be a trick or a treat. I don't know. Let's see where you're at on this one. After Mitch Marner's little trip to the dentist to get his chicklets fixed, okay, and scoring <laughs> his first and scoring his first goal in like the last seventeen fucking games, years, he fi- he finally got it going, or he finally will get it going and start looking like the guy we were used to seeing. He scored his first goal last night. Will the real Mitch Marner finally stand up? Trick or treat? I'll say treat, but like a Werther's original treat. Like it's not, it's not a coffee crisp or a bag of Doritos. It's like a, it's a candy, and you'll eat it. But I'm not too sold on it, right? So I'm gonna say treat, but kind of a shitty treat. I'm gonna say treat that we will see Mitch start to get his game going into November and December and January. Two part question. Part two. Oh. Oh, part two snuck up on me. Trick or treat. <laughs> will Marner, if Marner ends up finding it, which we think he will in the regular season, will it continue into the playoffs? And we see a different Mitch Marner in the playoffs next year or this later, like this season, or same old Mitchy, 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 Mitchy. Ducks on the palm, boys. Trick or treat. What would give me any reason to believe that this is a treat i've got my bag open i'm at the door and the lights are out i feel like i'm not getting a treat i feel like nobody's home and i'm not getting a treat trick i hope it's a treat but it's more than likely a trick only time will tell on that one i'm hoping the lights come on and they were just in the bathroom and they're gonna fill my bag full of treats but it ain't happening man (laughs) He might, he might fill your bag all right, but <laughs> not, not with not with treat, not with sweet no, treat. No, not with sweet. It's gonna be a trick. Big all trick. Right, all right, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I got a trick or treat. Okay. One last trick or treat. Okay. Yep. And I didn't prepare this. I I didn't even know what this whole trick or treat was. Okay. But this is a scary, scary trick or treat. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. it is. All right. Sure. Yes. <laughs> Trick or treat. You head into the showers after the game. Uh huh. Eddie Belfour is in there, leather jacket, drinking a beer. Best place to be after the game, right there. He turns to you and he says, You want a beer? You say, Sure. He says, Grab it out of my coat pocket. <laughs> is this a trick or is this a treat? You know what, man? <laughs> I think this is a trick and a treat. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Because I don't know for sure it's going to be a beer in that coat pocket. I don't know if he's wearing a long leather jacket. Is it short? Is it cut off at the waist? Does it go below the waist? Okay. I don't know what kind of game Eddie's playing here, but I know he likes to okay, spread same, it wide. I know he likes to spread it wide. It's the same leather coat he wore to the Hall of Fame induction. Okay, so it's short then. It's, it's a below, short. It's, it's a waster. Waist. It goes okay, to the waist. The waist. Okay, so but he's still sneaky. Like there, there could be, a, there could be a hole cut in the bottom of that pocket. Okay, so it could be a trick. Could be a it's trick. A trick. Maybe, so maybe you go in the one pocket thinking it's a treat, but there's a hole cut in it. You slide right down to the big eagle, and it's fucking a big trick. Okay, but maybe then he pulls a beer out of the other pocket, and it's a treat. So it's a trick in the one pocket, treat in the one. That's a double. That's a trick and a treat, a I trick. think. I trick think and you, a treat. You really, you really thought that one out fast. Like, like super fast. All right. 
let's look let's look ahead to I the- may listen, I may or may not have <laughs> no, I've never been in the showers with Eddie Belfort, but anyway. But you, you, yeah, I've you, imagined I've imagined it. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. You've thought about this before. Yeah. You have of thought course. about this. All of right. Course. So let's look at the week ahead because we're all excited that the Leafs won two games against the Blackhawks and the Red Wings. But guess yeah. who's coming to town this week? Yeah, big boys. Tuesday night. The Vegas Golden Knights, who aren't yeah. off to a great start. No, but they're still, not. They're, they're not. The Vegas isn't the same Vegas as the last couple of years, but but Still. then it gets, then it gets, then you have division rivals. Thursday, He's, Tampa yeah. Bay yeah. is coming to Toronto. And then Saturday, this is the one I'm looking forward to. We may yeah. do a podcast right after this game. I think we will. I think we will. Saturday. Yeah. And, well, the clocks go back, so that's good. That's right. Saturday, November 6th, the Boston Bruins for the first time since pre-COVID yep. are coming in to play the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm excited for this game. Yeah, I sure, am man. excited for this game. Yeah, I think next week we've been we've been doing Sundays the last couple of weeks, like it's Halloween night tonight, whatever. But I think starting next Saturday, we we maybe go back to uh, after the game live reaction after the game. But look, yeah, a, r- a rough start this week with the loss to Carolina. Did not love that game. Didn't or last week. Sorry, didn't love the Chicago game. Really better last night. It was better. They beat Detroit. So, you know, rough start to the week, but it did. There was a better ending to the week. But let's see what next week uh, has in store for these boys, because they're going to have to be on their fucking toes with Vegas, Tampa and the Boston Bruins coming to town. Let's see what they're made of when they start playing the big boys. We're going to find out next weekend. For the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast, on Twitter at the Tip in Podcast, email us at the Tip in Podcast at gmail.com. Follow us on YouTube at the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast. Hit like, hit subscribe. Check out our website, tipinsportsmedia.com, and also go to patreon.com backslash the Tip in Podcast. Donate um, to the podcast so that we can bring you more frequent episodes, better sounding recordings. Just invest into the podcast. And if you do that, down the road, you will be eligible for exclusive tip-in content. But until next weekend, and we'll see how this week goes, I'm not feeling too great about it, but we'll see how it goes. I'm Chad. I'm Dale. And we will. Go Leafs, go. Catch you later.